Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about DSM disk station manager for your Synology NAS and I want to answer the question is now in 2023 finally the time for you to upgrade your NAS from DSM 6.2 over to DSM 7 or more precisely DSM 7.1 now a few things straight off the bat first and foremost this video is aimed largely at users that have had a Synology NAS in the wild for around three to five years at least. If you are running a NAS older than that, then chances are you really have no idea what you're missing with DSM 7.1. Now, this is not a video that I'm trying to sell you DSM 7.1. What I'm trying to do today is give you some idea about the distance now between DSM 6.2 and DSM 7.1 and with DSM 7.2 on the horizon likely with a beta in Q1 of this year and eventual rollout with an RC release candidate and full release of DSM 7.2 I just want to give you some idea about the differences and in this video I'm going to be talking about a lot of the interface differences a lot of the advantage differences in terms of applications services that are only available on DSM 7.2 and 7.1 as well as things that are still still only available on DSM 6.2, things that may well be the reason that you are not moving over. And much like any of us that have got Windows 11 reminders knocking around on our computer, and I'll be straight with you, I bought a new laptop at the end of 2022, and I have still yet to upgrade that to Windows 11. I know exactly what it's like when you do not want to upgrade to where there's a bunch of change, a bunch of features are removed, and even some apps and services that you are so used to, first and third party, no longer functioning, even fully or in the way that you desire but we have to talk a little bit about the layout for this video if you want to talk about specific app differences fast forward I'd say about five, maybe even ten minutes, because what we're going to be talking about for now is one, why this screen is being laid out the way you're seeing it, and two, we're going to talk about some of the back end stuff to do with uh, security patches, or we're going to be talking about the way Synology is handling these two platforms, at least within their own development infrastructure. And if you don't care about that, you might want to fast forward. But for everyone else, let's really get into that. So you may notice right now that on uh, well, at least my left, it might be different for you. My left, I've got the little pop up there saying uh, on the DSM 6.2 side, the left hand side here, uh, higher than the one on the right. That's obviously because I'm here at the bottom of the screen talking to you throughout this video. I did debate whether to include me in this and I did a video, I tried doing this for about five to ten minutes without me on screen and I just felt like it didn't really portray the message. I'm not saying I'm a very picture, I am not. But I thought it'd be a lot easier to convey uh, the message here. So I do have OBS running here in the background with me here at the bottom of the screen. So again, normally this box would be down here at the bottom, but I'm leaving it up there. Uh, next thing I will highlight is the two NASs I'm using here are both NASs that are within my own infrastructure here. The one on the left here, the DS1621XS, is my second tier backup system you can see there it has been running woo, for most of the year with updates throughout um so as you can see there that system has been running long term there um whereas the one on the right there is a ds920 plus i've picked that now for a specific reason that i'll talk about later on um that one hasn't been on for as long but that is one i use for a lot of the content here so we're not going to be looking at the power of the nazis we are looking at the general dsm experience um we'll also obviously be opening in several apps but do bear in mind that when i do open the apps in different nazis we are We've got a four-core Xeon NAS here, and we have a four-core Intel Celeron NAS here. So there is differences in memory, differences in CPU there. So that will have its impact. Another thing I'll highlight is the only way I can show you these things side by side is to literally have them side by side here on screen. So everything is a little bit squished. I know it's annoying, but for example, if we were trying to show this on full screen obviously things are going to be a lot more you know spread out on screen we're using 100 percent view mode there and things are just going to look better but we're not able to do that 
oh, and show them both on screen. So there's going to be this slight squished view there that I hope you guys at home are okay with. Um, and finally, while we're going through this, it's worth again talking about visibility because as you can see, let's zoom out. That's if we run 80% mode in terms of visibility. This is what I'm going to be using throughout this video. But I just wanted to show you the size of the icons at 100% uh, zoom there. So again, 80% there. Uh, 100 so that gives you some idea about the size of the icons on a 100% view in your web browser there But for the rest of this video, I am going to be running this at 80% So I can fit more on screen there and just for the sake of evenness I am going to move both of these to have the box there at the top, right? So We could talk about the nitty-gritty of the user interface there. I will highlight that um, a more modern um, socket and Linux is running there on DSM 7.1. Uh, it is more responsive. Uh, you're not really going to see that uh, portrayed very well in this video. But DSM 7.1, or we're just going to refer to DSM 7 to make it easier. Um, it is a little bit more responsive. It is a little bit more fluid. It just looks a little bit more colourful. Um, I will say with both of these running um, at 80% uh, zoom there, the icons are a fraction smaller there on dsm 6.2 but before we go any you know we, we can talk about those apps i think a lot of you one of the major concerns uh, about uh, running a nas and its software is to do with the security and a long-term patch and commitment from the brands because although when you buy these products and they have a hardware warranty which is basically the brand saying they will provide a replacement and technical support of hardware issue for a given length of time traditionally on the plus series three years that can be upgraded to five or on the excess series starting at five when it comes to software support uh, they refer to lifetime support there but it is product lifetime support now what we're going to do is on the left hand side we can see here that product support page now this is their official database here for what they're prepared to support this is going to be one of those occasions where we are going to have to scroll ramp that screen across there indeed me being there at the bottom of the screen is going to be incredibly unhelpful we're just going to move that there so this is the full listing of all of those little bits and bobs of um, how they support you uh, in terms of technical support and the OS support there. By default, by the way, when you arrive at this page, you see it listed as general availability there. It's very important if you visit this page, I'll try to link to this in the description to select all, because this gives you a better understanding while we're seeing full, 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 you suddenly start to see limited. And that's because these are devices that are just old, old, old. They either don't support the latest updates because their hardware isn't capable of doing so, or Synology, by supporting every single product they've released in well over two decades, would be detrimental to the newer releases. They've got to spread themselves out accordingly. So the result is that some devices will have the, the OS support limited or end of life. So if we select end of life there, we can see products that have had uh, end of uh, basically their support restricted there. Now, all of these, I'm fairly certain none of these things supported DSM 6.2. They may have, may have, and I'm talking about the ones at the very top end the ones that may have been running like in uh, the 3612XS that was running an Intel Core, I believe an i3. But a lot of these devices are just not going to support that later firmware there. Now, limited support in OS support. This is going to be when it couldn't support DSM 7, but almost certainly supported DSM 6.2. And that means they've reached a certain point of their support. Finally, when it comes, uh, we go back to all there and we go to technical support. This is when it's going to become a question of the OS support there and whether they can support you up to a given point for your software and what you're running there. Obviously, the hardware support has largely ended at that point. Um, but overall, when it comes to the warranty, that's kind of the main distinction between the hardware support and warranty and the software support and warranty. Now, how that without you interacting with the brand um how that translates um in terms of passive support that is a very different conversation and this is probably one of the largest dividing factors between dsm 6.2 and all of the releases of dsm 7 0 1 and 2 coming up soon now the big difference between these two brands in terms of support there and when it comes to that passive backend is to do with updates regular consistent 
update. And I think it would be very fair to say that the updates that have arrived for DSM 6.2 for more than the last year have been more kind of product fixes, have been security patches and updates for any vulnerabilities that were discovered over time. Ultimately, these are small quality of life and security patchworks for that platform. Whereas as DSM 7.1, DSM 7.0, and indeed, of course, into the future DSM 7.2, all of those updates have been not only the same security patch uh, framework quality of life improvements, but also big key app update and and not just apps that are optional but core internal applications and services we talked about dsn 7.2 last year uh, towards the end where we talked about things like the updates in 7.2 toward uh, write once read many support we were talking about volume encryption and stuff like that these are things that are never going to come to 6.2 overall there even when you look at releases of dsn um, 6.2 you can see that there was an update in May for 6.2.4, and there was another one in February, both of these in 2022, but the updates themselves are less frequent. And you can go down there and see that the updates do not match the consistent regularity you see there on DSM 7.1 on the right hand side of the screen there. We're seeing far more regular updates. We've scrolled several times there, and we're still into just July. So these are ones where there are updates to those core apps and services that aren't are either not in DSM 6.2 at all, or if they are, just do not have the layered update, something we'll talk about later in the video. Now, you may be running a NAS like the DSM, uh, uh, the DS920, which has support of DSM uh, 6.2 or DSM 7.1. You may be buying one, and you may see there oh, great, I can download 6.2, or I can download 7.1 if I wish. But it's worth remembering, if you go for a newer NAS, such as the DS923, the DS923 does not have an update before 7.1. So this is why I said at the beginning of the video that this video is predominantly aimed at people that have already owned a NAS for three to five years. Because if you've ordered a NAS in the last year or so, and particularly a NAS that's been released officially by the brand in the last 12 months or so, you're not going to be able to roll back to DSM 6.2 anyway. So for those of you that are on the cusp of buying a Synology NAS and you heard about some great things that are limited to 6.2, we will talk about that, but predominantly they are to do with USB support, uh, third-party support of some services, and of course photo management, then that is going to be something of a hurdle to you. Now, we mentioned security updates earlier on, and we can go to the security advisory. So this is the official security advisory from Synology when vulnerabilities are highlighted to them, such as when they did the paid entry uh, into uh, the Pwn to Own um, um, event last year. That was when um, hackers are sort of brought all together in Toronto to um, kind of show off vulnerabilities, and they get paid for that. It's a whole competition. It's great for the industry, I think, and not everyone agrees with me on that. But for example, when we look at updates here, we can see, let's go for um, a vulnerability that was found here in, uh, let's go for a large scale critical update in VPN plus server. We can see that that is app linked. So if you're running the app on your NAS, then that's within that. But what about if it's not? What if it is DSM related there? So we've got a critical um, vulnerab vulnerability here. We can see here that in the case of this, a lot of those vulnerabilities are fixed if you update to the latest version of DSM 7 there, uh, DSM 7.1. Whereas there are other older updates, if we go back to maybe uh, here, a much older one here, we'll go to uh, this Samba related vulnerability here, we can see that if we go to DSM 7 and the applications and services in DSM 7.1, these have been either ongoing or they're still in the process of resolution. But the key is that it's still being worked on there. Now, again, we could go through all of these vulnerabilities and spend a lot of time going through them. But the ultimate uh, thing is that as we go through, we can see DSM 6.2 vulnerability there. It's telling you this vulnerability, you can't patch it out unless you upgrade to 7.1. So there's going to be a lot of you out there that are run 6.2 that may have systems that have vulnerabilities that can only be patched 
by scaling up to 6.2. And for a lot of you, this is going to be a big old deal breaker in terms of that upgrade. Because much like those of us that, you know, maybe running Windows 10 systems that don't want to go up to 11, or even people running Windows 7 systems that just things work and they don't want to go, they keep it offline. This is one of those things where if you are going to be online, it's going to be one of the biggest uh, converting factors why you've now in 2023 after more than a year year and a half of public and um, pri private beta development of dsm 7.1 why you should be moving towards it now moving forward we can have a look at the official downloads if you do want to check if a version of dsm 7 is available for your system you can go to the official downloads page from Synologies, it's archive.synology.com and from there you can find revisions of dsm you can find out if there is a version of DSM available for your system. So, for example, if we want DSM 6.2.4, we can run through the list out of all the NASs that support it. So, if we control F, look up 920, we can see there's a version for the 920, but again, putting 923, there is no uh, file there for that. So, that's a nice quick way to find it if you do have access to DSM there. But really, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to those security updates and the regularity of those updates and commitment from Synology on those two platforms. Now, let's delve directly into DSM 6.2 and DSM 7.1 right now at the beginning of 2023. It's the 3rd of January 2023. Let's delve into those applications and see where the core differences are after more than a year to year and a half of public um, engagement with DSM 7. So I've removed myself from the screen here, so that way we can now see everything a little bit better there. Now, as you can see, both of them, the user interfaces are fairly distinct. You've got the same blue background there on DSM 6.2. And in DSM 7.1, you've got that new kind of weird, corally, stony, uh, orangey thing they go for there. I quite like it, but again, all of that is completely customizable if you choose. Anyway, um, again, it's very hard for me to show you the responsiveness of both these platforms. I could look, log out and log back in. I will tell you right now, DSM 7.1 is faster to log into. They've both got support of the same um, security in the background there. So if we go in and open into the personnel settings there, two-step verification is very much supported on both of them. Um, again, there are Synology's own as well as support of third-party ones as well. But it's all fairly similar. And indeed, most of the menu options on both of the platforms still remain the same. But it's more about the presentation of them uh, between the two of them. So, for example, you've got that basic and advanced mode there. Um, and the way things have moved around, things have changed. The icons are a little bit more modern, I would say, uh, for the most part on DSM-7. But again, these are all surface level stuff. I'm not going to kind of bore you with stuff like that. Um, I will say, uh, between the two of them, the storage manager is displayed better on uh, DSM-7. I would say uh, a lot of the configuration options as well. It's a little bit more graphical, topographical. Um, that's only, I, I think it, that's kind of upgrades that are there available across the board. Again, you could have watched my whole review of DSM-7.1. I did an updated review of it in, uh, I believe, Nove uh, November or December. For those of you that have been pondering about the upgrade, I'll link for that in the description. But I will say, there are some features and services that are only available in DSM 7.1. So, for example, the latest generation of releases, like the 923, and again, this seems to be something Synology are only going to be entertaining from the 923 onwards. That is support of M2 NVMEs for SSDs as storage pools, something not only not available officially, that is to say, on the 6.2 platform, but indeed the majority of DSM uh, 7 and 7.1 NAS systems before the DS923. So it's not really a direct advantage to DSM 7.1, uh, but I will say that it's still something that you can only really get on that platform. Um, one thing I will highlight, if we go to the global settings there, um, we can look at one thing that is only available. Let's get to the options there. I've been using DSM 7 for most of the year, and now I've forgotten how to use DSM 6.2 a little bit. Um, one thing that you only get in 7 is, of course, fast repair, uh, which is when um, uh, the RAID repair is actioned and only the areas that are on the drives that would have had data based on the parity, the blueprints there, get filled and therefore RAID's uh, recovery is much, much faster. You can't get that on 6. Uh, but again, that is one of those weird advantages you're only really going to take advantage of once there's a failure so again a lot of the advantages you do find when it comes to at least the user interface and the services in the background are very much safety net and again 
passive things or things that you're not really going to be taking advantage of the majority of the time. These are very much the one versus 99% advantage there. And that, again, it's very hard to describe the improvement in the feeling, the responsiveness of DSM 7.1 over 6.2, but that is something that has become a, lo a lot more noticeable to me after a year of using just DSM 7. Again, I'm not selling 7 here over 6.2. There are definitely things in 6.2 that make it a standalone good on its own, but I can't ignore that it feels more responsive. Apps feel a lot more um, responsive to the touch. The UI feels better there. I like those icons on screen a lot clearer. And again, just the functionality, it just looks a lot more modern as well. Um, another area of distinction between them is to do with the package center there. Not only because there are certain apps that are only available on one platform or either or one or the other. I really don't like this thing at the top. I hate that. I can't stand looking at it. Um, but there are some apps that have just seen significantly more updates in uh, DSM 7 over 6. And we mentioned it earlier on when we were talking about the releases there. One of the big areas is, of course, how many of these apps have seen further updates. So, for example, if we're going to Active Backup for Business, you do find it's running 2.5.0 and they're running 2.5.0. The sub-revision is a little different there, but I will say there's very little difference between them. But then things get significantly different once you delve into some of the other more um, widely used applications and weirdly home apps so if you go to Synology Drive server that is one of the areas I saw a distinct difference so for example between the two of them we're seeing running version 3.0.3 .3 and running 3.2.1 that is a distinct difference between them in terms of all the apps and features and with the newer features coming into dsm 7.2 that's going to be a tremendous area of difference that you are going to be unaware of if you don't move to seven now again it's up to you if you want to go to seven if you're not going to use a lot of those features such as um, active directory support coming in and as mentioned some of the back-end storage features coming to 7.2 but it, i think there is a case to say that if you're not using dsm 7.1 and your nas is relatively modern within the last four years or so I think you aren't getting the best value for your money unless you move to 7.1 because that's where Synology is running all of its updates. Some of the bigger updates for apps, even if you look at things like Active Backup, again, I'm sorry, Hyper Backup. In Hyper Backup there, you are running noticeably different versions, running 2.2.9 and running 3.0.2. And a lot of the apps and features and support differs quite wildly between them and again some of them are things like Synology's own C2 platform getting a wider degree of support but there are other advantages as well and this is ones where you're going to have to de deep kind of dig into the app's own release notes to see just how much you're missing out when it is a full revision different and again things like um, the ability to back up your entire configuration um, uh, of DSM apps and services are improved in DSM 7.1 in a way that they're either very limited in their support in DSM 6.2 or just not available at all. When you want to back up your entire system and your configuration backups there, there's just you don't have the same level of options readily available to you there. So again these aren't all things you're going to be using day by day but they are things that you can take advantage of some apps really surprisingly and again weirdly the business apps are the ones that have seen the smallest revision difference between the two platforms so for example if you look at virtual machine manager between the two it's 2.5 to 2.6 it isn't a full revision but it is certainly um, a sub-revision and not a minor sub-revision difference and I think a lot of that is to do with businesses that don't run the updates or because DSM 7 rolled out later in the uh, in the um, in their release schedule to the XS the SA systems and it was the home systems that saw DSM 7 rolled out first I think a lot of the business apps have seen a, a continued development uh, a continued support I should say on 6.2 uh, than they have on home-based systems, which I think very quickly, at least on Synology development side, switched to DSM-7 priority there. 
Um, so again, a lot of those advantages in DSM-7 when we look at things like the storage to go back to it there. I think it's also worth highlighting the SSD cache handling. Uh, handling, handling of a lot of file backend stuff is just better and faster on DSM-7 because they've certainly tweaked things in DSM-7 and the file management, something, uh, the file handling, that is just not possible on 6.2 without fundamentally changing the whole infrastructure. Remember, when you're locked in to DSM-5, DSM-6, DSM-7, as a developer, you have to work within those rules and what is possible within that Linux framework. Whereas, when you move to a whole new revision, the rules are changed. You get to set the long-term um, uh, rules and guidelines for the updates and that's again after that year is where we see a big distinction but i will say again as mentioned earlier on there are quite a few reasons why 6.2 is still a great choice one of the ones that's heavily highlighted is to do with compatibility now compatibility of a lot of third-party hardware is definitely better in 6.2 and you may be running an existing 6.2 setup where if you do the update to 7.0, 7.1 or even 7.2, all of a sudden a whole bunch of hardware will stop working and a lot of them are USB connected. When DSM-7 rolled out, the support of um, USB devices Roll, it significantly reduced. We talked about a lot of office hardware scanners, printers, blah, blah, blah. But there really was a lot of equipment people using in their Synology setups, more predominantly home users, that all of a sudden stopped working. The same went for hard drive compatibility as well. We noticed that as units were coming out with DSM-7 by uh, DSM-7 and 7.1 by default, the compatibility lists for devices changed dramatically. We started seeing a lot of hard drives missing from the compatibility list. We started seeing a lot of enterprise level systems really only highlighting Synology's own drive. Synology were clearly prioritizing their own hardware. Now, yes, clearly, that's because they were developing either the firmware or the hardware in its entirety at the same time as the SM7, and therefore they had to prioritize developing in-house stuff first. You know, that's relatively fair. But there's still no avoiding that DSM 6.2 systems do have broader compatibility lists than those of their um, DSM 7 locked alternatives. So USB and general third party compatibility, and that does extend, by the way, to uh, PCIe network upgrades as well. So if we go for, uh, for example, uh, the DSM 1621+, Plus, we can go to the network interface updates there. We roll down. And as we can see, they kind of locked in their own ones there. But at the same time, if we were running this on a DSM 6.2 setup, so say we go for the DS 1618, go for it there, go to network interface upgrades there, uh, roll it through. 16.18 has a lot more cards supported there. And a lot of that, as you can see, is to do with the DSM requirements there, something that we're seeing that slow move towards, for good or for bad, or whatever of Synology's motivation for doing so, for development reasons, or, you know, to prioritize their own hardware. There's no avoiding that that is a change between six and seven that you might want to be aware of if you're thinking about the upgrade. I've realized while I'm talking to you, I've spent this whole time talking to the camera, you can't even see me. Um, so another thing, and probably I would say one of the big distinctions and probably one of the large dividing lines is to do with photography because we've talked about this before but for some bizarre reason that no one really knows Synology still hasn't brought over a lot of the features and services of PhotoStation but moreover and more you know um, importantly moments into their own Synology Photos application now I've not got it installed on this test NAS here, I had to do a format, but I'll make it easy for you. Synology Photos is a good application. It combines most, keyword, most of the features and services of PhotoStation, which is uh, targeted more towards professional photographers that want to share their media, um, and uh, configuration have very distinct share and configuration settings, and a lot of the AI supported services of Moments, 
However, one thing it doesn't have in terms of moments is subject support, where the AI recognizes not just faces for facial recognition, but it also recognizes animals. It recognizes drinks, it recognizes foods, it recognizes geographical things, it recognizes things. Whereas Synology Photos currently, and this is well after a year since its release, and after 6 million downloads there, sorry that went a bit mad there with the uh, OBS, uh, even with 6 million downloads, it still only supports facial recognition. It still um, copies and uh, tracks the metadata, so it can use places and locations, but so can moments. And, you know, Synology Photos has that map overview, which is great. It has to be said, Synology Photos still lacks a number of key apps and services that a lot of keen photo users and users that purchased a Synology NAS for its support of photo services still lacks. It's, you know, Photos is uh, a more responsive service. It has light file folder support, although it's not native file folder like FileStation. But still, nonetheless, uh, 6.2 still wins the day when it comes to photo management. In most other regards, I would also say that um, when it comes to navigating 6.2, if you've already been using a Synology NAS for many, many years, the movement of a, of a lot of apps and services can be a little bit jarring when you move to 7. I will say, once you've used 7 for a while, it feels a lot more intuitive, something that's a big priority with the Synology brand. But I'm not going to say that moving from 6.2 isn't without a degree of friction as things move around. But overall, I applaud a lot of the design choices in 7. For example, things like when you're a first-time user, and I think that's the big thing here, if you're a new user to Synology's platform, 7.1 makes more sense. Everything from the help section, which has a lot of animated GIFs and helps and guides of things to go through to set the device up, which just feel very clunky and old on DSM 6.2. Um, uh, uh, 7 brings a lot of that user-friendly stuff. So I think overall, new users, you're not the only things you're missing out on in 6.2 are um, the USB support and, and, over, and overall compatibility of third-party hardware and a lot of those photo things that may well eventually make it over to uh, Synology Photos. Who knows? We've got our fingers crossed it's been more than a year. But if you're a DSM-6 user, I think you're missing out more. You're missing out on a lot of the apps and development. There's probably apps that you're using in 6 that you're not even aware are improved, particularly, again, home or SMB apps. They've seen tremendous improvements in DSM-7 supported apps and services. And indeed, a lot of the background utility and user-friendly, uh, not user-friendly, uh, usability of the platform as a whole is just better on 7. And although Synology is clearly uh, committed to supporting DSM 6.2 for quite a long time, so for example, if we go for all, we look for a specific product, we're going to go for, let's face it, one of the most popular products there, the DSM uh, 920. You can see it still has a tremendous amount of long-term support in the pipeline there, and again, there's no real long-term limitations that we can see, and you can find out more about that product warranty there. You're going to be fine. You don't have to make this jump yet. But if you're running 2018 or more likely 2016 systems, like the DS916, uh, uh, um, you can see that technical support has already moved to the limited phase. That is the Intel Celeron system. And indeed, if we look at the likes of the 918, just focusing on this one product family, if you're running a 16 system, that is where you're going to start dropping off the radar there. But this has been my video on should you let's bring me back on camera. Let's, you know, give me give myself a slight sense of arrogance there to believe that you want to see me on screen. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been whether you should upgrade to 6.2 in 2023. On the whole, on points, I think you should. Um, but not if you are affected by that third-party hardware. Um, limitation or photo management there but if in every other regard i think it's time to make the jump thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video i will be doing a similar video to this uh, for other nas brands out there so do stay tuned for that because i think there are a lot of you that are slightly trepidatious to make the jump to new revisions i know hypocrite windows 10 to windows 11 no thank you sir um but do stay tuned for that subscribe if you did if you've got any questions or
or maybe things that I've not covered in this video, because let's face it, I only use these systems to a given small degree. There are a number of you, you know, there are millions of people using these systems in millions of different, oh, maybe hundreds of thousands of scenarios. So there may be many other ways in which 6.2 and 7, 7.1 and 7.2 are distinct in their own way that I have not covered that you think are important. And if you do, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough, enough, we'll make a follow-up video. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Use the free advice section over on NAS Compares if you need some help. It's the big blue button on the right-hand side of the page. Or go to the free advice forum on Ask NAS Compares, meet Eddie and the rest of the NAS community helping you out. Use the links in the description if you're going to buy Synology NAS. And importantly, this video has helped you. And if you were going to go to Amazon anyway, use those links if that's true. Because then we here at NAS Compares get a kickback that goes directly back into what we do. And click like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to stay abreast of future content. Other than that, have a great 2023. It has begun. I will see you, let's see, at the end of the year or maybe sooner. Cheerio.